Hi everyone, I almost fell down, but welcome to August 7th, Stremo Hospital Recap. The espresso beans are really starting to kick in, and if you missed my, my beautiful singing that I just re-watched in the last video, you should go watch that, because I am amazing, and we need to change the channel name from We Shouldn't Sing to We Should Definitely Keep Singing. At Ava's, oh, we keep starting off at Ava's. So Ava is drinking and looking at all the mirrors, and again, I would like to remind everyone the grief she gave Alexis for drinking during her time of strife with everything going on. I'm not judging, I'm just pointing it out. Anyway, Kiki's at the door and wants her, and Ava's like, go away, and Kiki's like, nah. She opens the door and she wants to take Ava out. Like, hey, let's let's go clubbing, you know? She doesn't say that. To the hospital, there's a therapy set, a group therapy session that Dr. Maddox recommended. So Kiki thinks it would help her to talk and Ava doesn't want to talk. Uh, she'll only keep pouring herself more drinks. And this is where I put the official reminder of how much grief she gave Alexis, but I already said that. So I feel like saying it again, would be a little judgy and I don't want to be judgy. Kiki won't stop her from punishing herself but she does make a call to Griffin first. Uh, she hopes he can stop over tonight and maybe like get her get through to her. Dr. Momro arrives promptly. Ava puts her mask on. She is planning on spending her life behind this door which honestly with all the great TV and everything going on and the motorcycles. I love motorcycles. They're just very loud. <laughs> you, you can do a lot behind your closed door. Plus there's Postmates that I don't live in the city. So like, I don't, I don't do Postmates, but there is Postmates, like that's a thing. And the car side to go, Applebee's, which I've done too many times cause we got gift cards. Like I'm just saying, there's options. But Griffin isn't buying it. He knows that she's afraid. And she is afraid. You know, the staring, the scaring kids, the smilers. Those smilers, let me tell you. That would be a great Stephen King book. But to be honest, he's probably already written a book about that because he's Stephen King. By the way, I'm reading it right now and I wholly regret that decision. It is terrifying and I'm like 50 pages in. So he tells her despair is the only sin that can't be forgiven. Um, what's worse, strangers turning away from her or her turning away from everything. At the jail, Hayden needs to delay her and Finn's dinner plans and she lies about where she is because she's at the jail, but she says she's definitely not at the jail. She says she's doing something. So the guard brings in Raymond Berlin. Wow, we got to see Raymond Berlin before we got to see Jeff Weber, but you know, that's none of my business. The affair immediately gets brought up and he admits that he did put up a wall, but he has had a lot of time to think about it and biology doesn't change their history and she's 100% his child. So she needs to ask him something, is there anything left from the hedge fund? And he's like, that's my girl. And she's like, eh, like, <laughs> not because of that. Um, he tells her there's nothing left and she tells him, about the name change and the new life. He notices her diamond, that's the wrong hand, her diamond, not that it makes a difference because I have no diamonds. And he asks why she needs the money. So she tells him about her fiance, Dr. Fiance, hey, saying it as long as I can because the salt. Drew Lynch just did a thing where he like poured salt and honestly, like, tempted. So she tells her about Dr. Fiance and the pregnancy, but her ex-husband Jared is an issue right now. She tells him the details. She would be betraying Finn's trust and the hospital's trust if she embezzled. Uh, her phone dings. It's Jared sending that cuckoo clock obnoxious gift. Like, <laughs> which by the way, like what gift maker does he use? Like he just got out of jail and he's like an expert at making custom gifts. Like goals honestly like I want to hear more about Jared like don't just bring him on as like a plot point give me a whole story about Jared and his gift making skills like he left prison and it's like the first thing I want to learn is what a gift is and how to make one Raymond thinks she should call his bluff and she won't risk it her dad sees that she's genuinely remorseful for what she did but if Jared exposes the truth she feels she won't be able to keep making amends for it in her way so he tells her that maybe she should come clean and hope she's forgiven. And unfortunately, that's all the time they have. He'll always be there for her no matter what, as long as it's within visiting hours. And he knows that she'll succeed. At Trauma Hospital, Sam keeps dreaming of her final interaction with Sunny. Finn comes in with good news, but can see Sam is visibly upset. Sam says it's just nightmares. Her lab results look good. Her white blood cell count is better. And she should be totally clear in a few days. He tries to talk her through recovery. And although physically, 
she'll be fine. She has to let her mind fully heal or she could have a setback. She takes her phone out after he leaves and she sees the group conversation where Christina is saying her dad was shot and they don't know how bad it is. So Sam tries to get up and Felix stops her. She wants Jason, she asks about Sonny. He says that he's good, he'll make a full recovery. He's here at the hospital right down the hall. So Sonny dreams about their final interaction as well. Carly and Jason catch up. Dante wants to follow up with Sonny real fast, basically who shot him. Uh, he says the first shot wasn't serious. So oh, that was a bumblebee. Okay, I got scared for a second, but it's okay. Okay, why do espresso beans make me borderline drunk? This is weird. This is what heat and caffeine does to me, apparently. The first shot to Sonny wasn't serious because he was wearing the magic vest. And then Sonny says the rest of it was a blur, including the leg shot. And Sonny looks at Jason like, I have espresso bean in the middle of my front teeth, but I can't get it out. So just pretend you don't see it. I legit want to go on record saying I used a leaf to get the espresso bean out the middle of my teeth. It's been a crazy morning, guys. Sunny tells him about the Spencer text. Carly wants, you know, Don, he, she wants him to leave. Like he's not totally with it right now. And then Sunny asks about Sam and Carly's like, how'd you know Sam was not feeling well? And he says, oh, I heard you and Jason talking. Good cover. So Sonny wants a minute with Jason, but Felix clears the room. He'll be in physical therapy with Epiphany again and just cannot wait. Carly tries to speculate what Sonny would have wanted to talk to Jason about, and he tells her that Sonny is safe. Uh, he probably just wants to tell him something non-essential. Everything's going to work out. No need to worry. Jason asks Griffin about the lasting effects of what Sam is going through. If and hypothetically, if someone who had the sickness did something while they were sick, would they do it again? And Griffin will look into it. Ava and crew arrive at the hospital for her group therapy. Uh, Sam is out of bed and sees Ava. Ava arrives and is the first one at the group therapy session and Sam sneaks up beyond her. She doesn't mean to sneak up though. She remembers helping Ava with her mask and she's looking for like, cor uh, not corroboration. Basically, she wants to know if it really happened or not. So she asks Ava how she was. She brings up the things, uh, Ava brings up the things she said about Sonny. Uh, he could have been her worst enemy the way she was talking. Sam is fishing for more information. Ava thinks Sam was speaking from her subconscious and that's the way she's always really felt but would never say it because she's part of the united front. I would never say anything bad about Sonny. So Sam gets very defensive when she says that. And now Hayden's back in her office and that end scene. Ava wants to leave. She doesn't want to do this group therapy. Kiki stops her. Griffin is there too and they want her to just try. Hayden tells Finn she was looking at exotic vacations and she booked tickets. Felix lowers the lights so Sunny can sleep and then Felix tells Carly she should get some rest too. Jason goes to Sam's room and she's not there. Sunny can't stop thinking about what Sam did and Sam is standing over him and he like kind of wakes up because you can like feel when someone's standing over you staring and she goes you're still alive well that's not ominous at all all right uh thank you so much for watching i know this one was a little bit of a mess but we're getting there i'll see you in two seconds for more drama hospital okay bye